All right, welcome to Unit 13. Another one of my favorite topics, which deals with trigonometry. Trigonometry is a Greek word which means triangle measurement. It is a branch of mathematics that studies triangles and their, and their side lengths and their angle measures. It is actually a class that you can take in college, a full semester class. But what we're going to talk about here is we're going to talk about trigonometric functions. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is discuss the three different trigonometric functions. What is a trigonometric function? It is a ratio of any two sides of a right triangle. It compares the two sides. We all know ratio means fraction. So trig functions are the ratios of two sides of a right triangle. And most of you have seen this before, but I'm going to go through and review it with you really quickly. If you can, please draw these two pictures. And we're going to talk about the three most common trig functions. Now, first of all, my little trick for you is you can never stand at the right angle of a triangle. I want you to pretend you're a little black, fat, hairy, juicy bug that's standing at one of the angles that's not the right angle. And the reason I do this for you is because you need to identify the three words that, I, that identifies the sides of a triangle. First of all, we all know that the right angle is an arrow that points at the hypotenuse. The longest side of a triangle is the hypotenuse. Now, I'm going to go back a few slides here, or a few steps. My little fat, juicy, black, hairy bug starts walking, and he walks right through the middle, a straight line, right through the middle of the triangle, and he dies on what is always called the opposite wall. Opposite is opposite, or where my big, fat, juicy, black, hairy bug dies. That means the third side is the adjacent side. So you need to make sure you know that. And if you don't understand that, please ask me. But the black, juicy, fat, hairy bug always dies on the opposite side of the triangle. All right. So how does that help us? Well, I want you to go to this picture now, right here. First of all, this little goofy symbol in here is the Greek symbol for the word theta. It is always used to represent the angle in a right triangle. That's what they call theta. So if you see that symbol, that's just what it is. Now, Let's talk about the three trig functions. If I'm the big, fat, juicy, black, hairy bug standing right here in this corner, then obviously this wall is opposite. The green line is adjacent. And the blue line is hypotenuse. The three trig functions that compare those three sides are called sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. Those are the three trig functions that compare two different sides of a triangle. And those are the ones that you really need to memorize. If you can't memorize those, Remember the Indian chief, Sakatoa. The, in, the famous Indian chief will help you remember that because the letters stand for S is sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, C is cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, and T is tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So remember Sakatoa, and you can remember the trig functions. Now, let's do some practicing. I drew this triangle right here, and it's a 6, 8, 10 triangle. Angle theta is in the corner. It also can be called angle A. 
So I want you to pretend you're that big, fat, juicy, black, hairy bug, and you are standing right here in the corner. And again, this would be opposite. I always encourage you to label the sides of your triangle. This side would be the adjacent. And of course, the blue side would be the hypotenuse. So if I ask you, what is the sine of angle A? Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I would write 8 over 10. And I'm not going to reduce them right now. I'm just going to leave them the way they are. If I ask you what cosine of A is, cosine is adjacent, which is 6, over hypotenuse, which is 10. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, which would be 8 over 6. Now, the reason I'm doing this for you is I want you to see a comparison of the two angles and sides and their trig functions. Now I'm going to go stand up here at angle B. Now my words change. Because I'm up here at angle B, my big, fat, juicy, black, hairy bug walks through the middle of the triangle. Now this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. The hypotenuse always stays the same. So now, if you notice, I want sine of angle B, which means I'm standing there. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which would be 6 over 10. Cosine of B would be adjacent, which is 8 over hypotenuse, which is 10. And tangent of B would be opposite over adjacent, which would be 6 over 8. Now, the reason I did this is because I want you to see the relationships. Do you notice that these two are the same? The sine of angle B will always be equal to the cosine of angle A. And vice versa. The sine of angle A is equal to the cosine of angle B. Very important relationships. Now look at the two tangents. You notice they're reciprocals. So the tangent of angle A is equal to 1 over tangent of B, which means they're reciprocals. You flip them over. Three very important relationships which I want you to write. Now, if you take a calculator, I want you to take a look at this triangle right here. I put the angle measures in. So I asked you, what is the sine of 40 degrees? If you type that in on your calculator, you're going to get a decimal like 0 0.6427, etc. If you type in cosine of 50 degrees, you're going to notice that you get the exact same answer. So these two angles are equal, or those two trig functions are equal. And what I want you to notice is that the two angles add up to 90 degrees. So if I asked you what the sine of 30 degrees is equal to, that would equal the cosine of 60 degrees, because these two angles have to add up to 90. I hope that makes sense. If not, please ask. Now let's do a problem. Here's a building. Building's drawn in blue. I need to know how tall that building is, so I label it X. Now, you're a person that's standing way over here on the lawn, 110 feet away from the building, and you look at the top of the building at a 22-degree angle. I want to know how tall the building is. Well, since you're standing at the 22-degree angle, that's where my little, fat, black, juicy, hairy bug is, and it walks through the middle of the triangle, and it dies over here on that wall. This is opposite, and 110 feet is adjacent. You need those two sides, because this is the letter X, and this is 110. Those are the two sides that you need. So if I was going to write a trig function to solve this problem, I would write opposite over adjacent, which is tangent, and then I put the angle where I'm standing, which is 22 degrees, I always make it a fraction, so I write it over 1, is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is x over 110. Now all I do is cross multiply. x times 1 is x is equal to 
the cross products this way, which is 110 times the tangent of 22 degrees. And if you type that in on your calculator, 110 times tangent 22, you're going to find out that the building is 44.443 feet tall. Always round to three decimal places. But that is how you use trigonometry to find missing sides of a right triangle. Again, here's my right angle right here. It's got to be a right triangle. All right, one more thing. How many different ways can you compare two sides of a right triangle? Well, if you go back to what we learned about probability, FCP, the fundamental counting principle, I'm comparing two sides. Well, how many sides could I choose first? Well, I have three choices. So let's say I want to compare this side to one of the other two. Well, if you notice, 3 times 2 is 6. There are six different ways to compare. Uh-oh. We only have three trig functions. We know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And we know tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Well, we need three more. And these are the three new ones. They aren't used as much, but they do come into play, especially next year. The first one is called cosecant. Cosecant is basically the sine function flipped over. So in other words, it is hypotenuse over opposite. Secant is equal to the cosine flipped over, which would be hypotenuse over adjacent. And the last one is called cotangent, which is equal to the tangent flipped over, which would be adjacent over opposite. Those are the six trig functions the bottom three being brand new to all of you. Now, how does that work? Well, let's use the triangle that I have drawn and find all six trig functions. Find all six trig values. All right. Well, let's talk about, we're going to talk about we're standing at angle A. So what is the sine of angle A? What is the cosine of angle A? And what is the tangent of angle A? And then we're going to find what is the cosecant. That's abbreviated CSC, cosecant of angle A. Then we're going to find the secant of angle A, which is abbreviated SEC. And then we're going to find the cotangent of angle A, which is abbreviated COT. All right, so I'm standing here. Again, this would be my opposite side. This would be my adjacent side because my black bug walks through the triangle and dies on that opposite wall. So the sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths. Now cosecant is the sine flipped over. So very simply, the cosecant of angle A would be 5 over 3. Flip this fraction over. The cosine of A is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 4 fifths. The secant of A is the cosine flipped over, so that's 5 over 4. And finally, the tangent of A is opposite over adjacent, which is 3 fourths. The cotangent of A is the tangent flipped over, which would be 4 over 3. And that is the six trig functions, and that is your introduction or slash review of what right triangle trigonometry is. Again, I went through this kind of fast, but if you have questions, please ask during class.